Hello there and welcome back to Forza Horizon 5 for another week of our high performance dailies. Whatever that's supposed to mean. <laughs> Starting off with a weekly challenge, we've had to drive a BMW X5. And then uh, you'll notice this doesn't look like your average BMW X5. Um, that's because the first thing we had to do with it is win a street race in S1 racing. It started off as a B. How did it end up like this? Uh, we had to spend like 120,000 credits on this thing to get it up into the S class and now we're racing against Ferraris and such. It doesn't feel right. I don't feel optimistic about winning this, or at least I didn't, but now I'm in the lead and now I intend to stay there, so by any means necessary. I did upgrade it along race lines so it's got race suspension it's got a replaced engine it's got all of the performance improvements basically everything that i could do i have done to it <laughs> everything is upgraded like even including like turbo so it sits around the middle of the s1 rating i think which means that i shouldn't be racing against by hypercars, <laughs> things that are pushing up close to the S2 at least. Everyone's getting just backed up behind me because I'm having to avoid traffic anyway. So then they are having to avoid traffic. And me. <laughs> so somehow we're managing to stay ahead. I'm just gonna dab the brakes a little bit more around there. The other thing is of course this is a four-wheel drive SUV. So I'm having to brake plenty before the corners. It is not the most maneuverable thing, as you'd expect. It's a weird requirement. It'll be interesting to see what they have us do with it next. <laughs> so, okay, you've got us to upgrade this for street racing, S1, then what? <laughs> Where do you go from there? It feels like it should be the final challenge, not the first one. <laughs> Well, we've managed to stick it out. It's a weird strobe effect from the street lights, so that's that's awkward. I always mess up that corner. I'm just going to go straight through here instead of getting back on the road. And I just pushed him out of the way to stay in front. Oh, that'll do. Tuned to perfection complete. If you say so. I don't know about perfection, but uh, definitely tuned. Next thing they have us wanting to do is uh, getting three stars in speed zones. There is a speed zone just up here at the end of this dirt track. I mean, this is an SUV, so I'm just going to get a bit of a run up. <laughs> Instead of having a corner, I'm going to just go straight up here. We don't have to get three stars at a single speed zone necessarily, but hey, if we can, that would be great. My EB for this is like 150 or something. I think the requirement was 140. Ooh, yes, just, I think. UPB, in fact. There we go. I'll take it. What's next? <laughs> All right, next thing we have to do with the BMW is get a kangaroo skill, which is simple. Like, I just need to do a couple of short hops. I could do that anywhere. But there's also a daily challenge. As I was saying, there is a daily challenge for getting to round three of any Horizon Arcade event. So I thought, well, I'll do one of those then. And for all I know, earning a kangaroo skill might even be part of it. I'm just trying to get a speed skill first. Oh, finally. It took forever. I was almost running out of room. Earn two drift skills. Well, that should be easy enough. One, two. Three drift skills now. Really not stretching the imagination on this one. 
usually counts if you turn a drift skill into a great drift then that counts as two. Now I've got 25 seconds to wait until the next uh, mini mission is active. They really have you sitting idle for a long time. Oh and then it was just earn a drift skill again. Are you serious? It just had me do two drift skills, three drift skills, one drift skill. Alright. <laughs> Ah, oh, bank as much skill chain and it literally just banked my 70 odd thousand that I'd built up from doing all of that. Never mind, we'll just have to do some more on the way there. Because it only counts if you bank it in the area, what you want to do is just try and build up some really good combo as you go. And then as soon as you get there you just stop and let it bank and it'll probably just give you the <laughs> uh, give you the completion straight away but you've got to remember to chain in some like drift skills and stuff between wreckages and things like that because otherwise your combo will run out i don't even know where we're going i also still need that kangaroo skill so can we get that like through here not quite that's fine, we've got another another round after this. Oh, you're kidding me. Of course, I hit the one rock that's in the way before I, just before I get to the skill zone. I had like 180,000 points lined up there. Well, there's more rocks. This is the worst place to earn skill points. Alright, well... But we'll see if we can get that kangaroo skill at some point, just jumping around down here. We just need to avoid the rocks this time. <laughs> I shouldn't overcomplicate it though. I need to focus on just get the skill points, make sure I can bank them, because I've only got five minutes to do this and the next round. I don't want to fail that. Then I can worry about doing the kangaroo skill on my way to the next location. Which is what I should have done on the way here. I mean, I noticed that there's someone else here as well, but the group progress... There we go, they just banked theirs and it was only 29,000. That's concerning. <laughs> I think they've been having the same problem that I have. Okay, we've got a times five multiplier. I barely missed that tree. Now's the best time to bank it so we can build up the next multiplier without losing anything. Or we just complete it because we banked enough stuff. Right, Trailblazer is quite good in some respects for the sake of the kangaroo skill but it is also bad in other respects because you have to re repeat it you have to do it multiple times usually unless you get really good time first time through okay i saw kangaroo come up as part of that mess of me just ruining that corner so i know that we've got that but it just isn't showing up while we're in this now this is annoying we've got to drive through the tunnel here i don't like this tunnel very much the walls do weird things i'm not going to turn left i'm going to go straight ahead I mean, this thing isn't tuned for off-road, but it is at least technically an off-roader. So that might help. Depends what the target is for this. We'll find out. Okay, we've just got to be seven seconds under on a second run. Or we need our friend who was there before to come through and finish it himself but he seems to be stuck down the bottom there that's a problem 
Here he comes. Here he comes. Will he do it? Will he do it? I think he's in the BMW as well. <laughs> Will he manage it? Or do we have to fast travel back to start again? Excellent. There we go. Sometimes you can trust other people to do the right thing. Alright, so up next, uh, we need three more points to get to the halfway point for the season. And uh, Treasure Hunt, City to the Beach. From a busy day in the city to playing on a tranquil beach, rove the land from here to there and we'll give you points to spare. Okay, we've got a lovely riddle. From that, I can determine we need to start in the city, which should be Guanajuato, and drive a land rover to the beach beach player is all perhaps we'll try that and see if it works <laughs> all right so we've got a land rover it's a defender i've tuned it up previously to be a like b rating with off-road tires and everything because we're probably going to do some off-road probably didn't need to start in the middle of town probably just had to be within the city limits but just in case started from downtown and I've set my route to my house in Player Azul. And we'll see if that works, if that gives us the treasure chest location. We're going to get to a certain point where we won't be following the road anymore. That's for sure. <laughs> but for now, I mean, we've got this road that's pretty conveniently laid out anyway between the cliffs and the valley. It's a speed zone up here that I'm not going to go through. I'm going to intentionally just bust through that. Because if you go through a speed zone, all the traffic gets ghosted, and then you can't get the uh, skill points from going past traffic. All right, I think it's time to go off-road, especially since we've got a skill song active anyway, so let's just farm that for a bit. We'll probably hit a tree, and it'll break anyway, but, you know, in the meantime, <laughs> we'll see what we can rack up. Skill songs let you get your... Multiplier to times 10, which is quite nice. I still haven't had a thing come up to tell me that I've got the treasure clue. There we go, treasure challenge complete. <laughs> Just as I was saying that. Well, I guess we'll go and see where that is then. We might not need to drive the other 600 meters. And sure enough, it's the other side of the map entirely. Okay. I wonder whether or not they expected you to drive to this beach over here, but why would you? It's so far away. <laughs> so the treasure chest is somewhere in the golf course, presumably. I think we've had this one before. It was like in a bunker or something. Nope, here it is. In someone's backyard. Oh, it's the uh, golf course shop, presumably. 100 falls of bomb points, nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, there's all the golf carts lined up. And with that, we are halfway there, slightly over. Ford Fiesta 23 redeemed. So on to the first of our seasonal championships, and we're back in the Alfa Romeo that we featured last week, I think. Uh, the requirement was 2010's high performance daily, so it seems that the term for the season is also now a car category somehow. I don't fully understand it, but whatever. <laughs> but we're back in this because there's also the PR challenges for the season require A800 or lower super saloons. This is both of those things. So we get to double dip and stay in the same car for longer, rather than jumping between lots of different cars, which I prefer not to do. So this is a pretty short track, quite a restricted circuit around the mountaintop. Less than a minute pretty much if you do the laps properly, which we're not doing. Um, <laughs> so we've got to hunt down the front runners pretty quickly so that we can stay ahead, preferably for the final lap. I don't like having to chase people down on the final lap if I can avoid it. So we'll try and do some responsible racing and some good lines through some of these corners. 
That one's always an interesting one though because they seem to break a lot on the previous corner when it's that one before the finish line here that you need to break most for. I mean they then don't have to break as hard for that one because they're already going slower but trying to get through here get a decent run off there once again they're just going to be hanging in behind me now I imagine just waiting for me to make a mistake last couple of corners so here's the one that they break a lot for up here so that should give us a bit more of a lead and now see if we can do this one a bit more cleanly good enough we can just cut the corner through that flag. And up to the line for race one of three. Race two, and it's another pretty rapid race. Circuits with probably, in general, about a minute and 10, minute and 20 in terms of laps, but some of them are much closer to the minute mark. Depending on your car rating, obviously, but... A's tend to be kind of the middle of the road pack. All over the road, really. It's a very tight and twisty circuit, this one, and I really wish that, one, the sun was higher in the sky, and two, that this car was a little bit better through the corners. I never ended up rechecking its tuning after last time. It's a mid-engine rear-wheel drive, so it shouldn't be too bad. Is it mid-engine? No, I think it's actually front-engine rear-wheel drive. So the, right, the weight distribution's alright. We can at least gain some ground through that corner section, because they always seem to try and just follow the bends instead of cutting through the middle of them. Another chicane section through here that we can cut ahead. Following the same sort of formula as usual, generally we expect to get through a bit of the pack on the first lap, get up to like top three on the second lap, and then ideally chase them down, if not get fully into the lead by the third lap. At the very least, get ahead on the final lap to finish. a little bit before that corner because I had trouble with it last time. Here we've got to dive through here and not get stuck behind them. That's the hardest part. <laughs> Navigating the corners is one thing. Getting past the traffic is the other. So best lap so far is just over a minute. We don't have any flotsam in the way. Let's see if we can get under a minute on this one. up to these bins I don't have to worry about crashing into anyone this time so I can just skip straight through there will we get under a minute no not quite not even my best interesting <laughs> just goes to show that sometimes even when you really try hard and uh, do kind of what you think is your best sometimes it's better to just fluke it <laughs> You do better sometimes just by not thinking too much about it and just going with it. That aside, we no longer have any short circuits. I wonder whether or not we're winning an electric car out of this. We have a sprint now anyway. Which we rip through here. Which, I mean, in keeping with it, is a pretty short sprint race with a very annoying bend in the middle of it. This one here. Yeah, they're all just crashing into each other. Oh, all right, all right, guys. Can you not pile up, please? <laughs> Honestly, I despair at the AI sometimes. Seriously, like sometimes they'll seem to be racing really well and you struggle to keep up with them. Other times they do that and they just all crash into the same corner. It's like, what am I supposed to do with this information? <laughs> How am I supposed to know what I should expect when I'm racing against these guys? Anyway, 
we're up to fourth. We need to come at least third, usually, to guarantee winning the series. So we're not too far off. But we are running out of racetrack. Because we just have these few bends, and then we're on the motorway, and then it's the finish. So that's a worry. I really needed to get ahead on those corners back there where they were all piling up. Do we have the legs to take this guy? I don't think so. Do we have enough points to secure the championship? We do. We don't have to restart. We have four points clear in the end. So we did win a Xping P7, which I think might actually be the electric car that I've choked about. <laughs> and I think might also be a super saloon that would qualify for the PR challenges that we wanted to do. But we're going to stick with the Alpha for now and hope that it does what we need it to. What we need it to do for now is fly 260 meters off this danger sign, which is not really what it's designed to do. That was not good. 212? Hmm. I was hoping for more. The key point is that it has to remain in A800, so I can't just boost the power. Or if I do, I have to lose other things. Let's just get some cleaner lines through here. I wonder also whether or not the direction that I jump matters. If we go more off to the left, we might not hit that little hill. Nope, even worse. We're going to have to try something different, I think. But realistically, I think I should have taken it as a cue that I wasn't winning those races as easily as I should have, that not all A-classes are created equally. And this Audi RS6 we've tuned up should jump a lot further. It's got a top speed of 360-something instead of the Alfa Romeo's 280-something. Sure enough. I think the only risk we had there was failing the danger sign in the first place. And that extra top speed should help us when it comes to our next PR challenge, which is the speed trap along the top of this mountain road here. It's just after a tight corner, so we've got to be careful on our lines leading up to it. Especially since there's a very steep drop off the side up here. It's also traffic, which is very helpful. We need about 210? 209? Is that good enough? That's good enough. Just. I'll take it. <laughs> now for our next PR challenge though, we are back in the Alpha because we need to do some drifting. I'm not sure what gear I should be in, but I've turned off all of the driver aids. So we'll see how well we go. It still seems to want to grip far too much and just not drift. <laughs> It's too good. There we go. Once you start sliding, usually that's fine. But the tricky thing is keeping it sliding. Because once it starts to straighten out, it'll gain grip again. And then it'll just want to, to track. So you've just got to keep it off balance. And just uh, occasionally tap the e-brake again. Jump the tail out again. We just need to get 100,000 points. We do need to stay on the road, though. Final bit up here, there we go. Good enough. Never going to be amazing, but good enough. Not quite a PB. Second seasonal championship, and we're in a different Audi this time. Audi S1. So we need to be 700 total or maximum rating cars. We're doing some dirt circuits. It's not got off-road tyres, but it is at least all-wheel drive. So hopefully that'll be good enough. No, let's just stay on the outside, actually, please. I'm sure we had this race circuit in a championship not that long ago. I feel they really do need to mix them up a little bit more. Oh, never mind. I think we were racing in the Audi TT. Which, interestingly, is the reward from this seasonal championship. So kind of come full circle a little bit. <laughs> Racing one Audi to win another that we already own anyway. It certainly does get to the point sometimes where if you already own the cars that uh, you win from doing the championships, the incentive is not so much there. But at least in this one, unlike in 4, where you just get kind of stuck with them, where you just sell them, you can gift them to other players, which is nice. 
Got to admit, we are struggling a little bit to catch up on this race, which I feel I have had issues with before. I'm not sure whether it's because they have off-road tyres and I don't, but then the road segments also seem to be a bit of an issue. Or that this car is just not tuned very well, it's entirely possible. Might be a case of so long as I can get at least third, if I can overtake these two, which uh, unfortunately just got in my way, but there's one, and I just need to get past the next one. That'll be a good start. I think I might just need to jump in and give this off-road tyres, which should then probably reduce the rating and allow me to then do some other things as well, hopefully. And that might make the next two races a little bit easier. Or we can just get lucky and hope that they slip up and we can dive ahead, maybe? Question mark. We've got a few more tight corners. We've just got to stay in touch and try and take advantage of anything that they make mistakes on. And just cut the corner as blatantly as we can without it telling us off. No, no can do. We're just going to be tucked in behind, but we'll be third. And then we've just got to do better next time. Alright, this time it looks pretty much the same, but uh, we've given it the off-road tyres and rally suspension and a rally diff as well. We'll see if that makes much of a difference. I was tempted to just take the wing off though, <laughs> quite frankly, because uh, our speed stat is terrible. But generally with the dirt races, top speed, not as much of an issue. Oh come on, I barely touched him until here. Kill my combo over that. Never mind. There goes my clean star. Yeah, much quicker getting up to second place this time. I think uh, the off-road tyres really help. Either these two also have them, or they just had the benefit of starting at the front of the grid anyway. Yeah, get out of the way. <laughs> Won't be as good on the tarmac. But that's fine. We just cut the corner <laughs> and go on the dirt that way instead. Got this corner section to work our way through here now. Where we're managing to hold our lead. So we're basically the Pied Piper of Aldi's at the moment. Underneath the motorway. Always feels like we're braking much more heavily than we need to when the AI on the minimap just kind of concertina up and just seem to get right up behind you, but of course they are braking as well. So what matters is so long as you can sustain the lead you had up to the next corner, then you're not doing too badly. That felt a lot easier with the off-road tyres, not surprisingly. And now we're in the final race, where honestly it feels like I probably would have been better to just stick with the road tyres again, because I know that this scramble race does not actually have that big an off-road section. It's quite a short little track around the town, and this bit up here past our player house is basically the only off-road segment. <laughs> so we'll be doing this three times, so we've got those chances to make advantage out of our off-road capabilities. But once we get back to the road at the end here, it's just tarmac the, the whole way back to the start finish line. We've got some pretty twisty corner segments through here on the road as well, which is where having better grip tires for the road might have been nice. But we'll make it work. The four-wheel drive generally means that you're not going to slide around too much regardless. And it means that if you brush a little bit wide and go off the road, it doesn't matter as much. 
Alright, off-road segment number two. Yep, see, they're sliding around a fair bit. I don't think they've got the grip. One went into the other. And we're away. Now we'll just have to hold it through tarmac corners. But then we've still got one more lap in hand where we can press our advantage. Try and get a decent entrance on this corner. It's tricky because you've got that second one and then another really tight bend crunch there. <laughs> really don't want to hit the wall on the way out of the bend. Yeah, see, he's right there. Just kind of blocked him a bit, but... If you knock into the wall at the start of the corner, it's not great. But it kind of slows you down for the rest of it. <laughs> and you've got the chance to accelerate. If you knock into the wall on the runoff from the corner, that's bad. Because that's just slowing you down when you want to be accelerating harder. So if you're going to mess up, mess up early and then recover. Okay, we didn't jump as much there, which is kind of good. It means we probably weren't going as fast through that corner section necessarily, but time you spend in the air is time you don't spend gripping on the ground, which is kind of what you want to do when you're on wheels. <laughs> this is not pod racing. Bit of dab of brakes through there, keep a little bit of power on. Power on harder there, and then turn into this now. Once again, we wanna... Yeah, okay, we messed up at the start of the corner, but not the end. That's better. <laughs> Still close, but we are ahead. Right, final race. We needed three more points for the season, which means we have our pick of the Event Lab races. I've gone with the Event Lab Island race because it said Neon Knights, which, uh, yeah, that's my aesthetic. So, <laughs> this is pretty cool. Uh, it said Neon Knights Devil's Rush, so I assume it's a track that they've done previously and now they've just kind of retro waved it up. I'm down for that. So, we had a choice of a few Aston Martins or this Ferrari. I went with the Ferrari, I'm not sure if I'm regretting it yet. Uh, it's not tuned in any way, I don't think I had anything that was tuned. Ooh, this isn't good, this isn't good at all. Well, just as well we've got another lap after this. <laughs> Whenever I'm selecting cars I always look for those that are at the top end of the range. For A class that means 799 or 800, somewhere up there. This was 780 something. So it's naturally high, but not tuned. What is this road even doing? This is weirdly off camber, and it's really messing with my brain. <laughs> we might just have to restart this one, though it's a very long track, actually. I thought we were coming up to the finish, but we've got another, another bit here. Oh, there's only six guys, so we're coming last. All right, I think it's time to put it into bonnet view. I know you don't get as much of a good view of the car like this, but I race much better when I'm not in third person. Usually, he says, drifting terribly through that corner. So I think it's time to focus a little bit more. <laughs> Whoa, okay, we didn't expect that to be a jump. Good one. Catching up to come first is going to be tough. Especially after we had that mishap earlier. I mean, if this isn't upgraded much, we probably don't have much scope for tuning it either. The fact that we're up against those who have big rear wings and everything means that they are likely tuned from like a low 700s up to the highs. Like, I could have taken, like, an 801 Aston. So, bottom end. 801? Is this S1 or, or A? I can't remember. 701 or 801, whichever it is. But then I would have been up against things that were, like, 840, 850 or something. Middle of the rating. 
Thankfully, everyone seemed to mess up on the final straight before the finish line, so we caught right back up again. But we are going to try and hunt this guy. Okay, let's push him off into the area that we made the mistake before. There we go. Uh, didn't work. <laughs> All these off-camber corners. Very, very tricky. Okay, this one's even tighter than I thought. What even is that ahead of us? Can't really identify it. Okay, well we didn't go off the track there, so that's already an improvement. It looks like a Mazda badge, but I don't think that's a Mazda, surely. <laughs> If it is, it's had some serious tuning. Staying close. Oh, good. He completely messed up that corner. Fantastic. I'll take that. I was just expecting to have to stay closely in touch and hunt him down through these corners up here. I don't want to jump too much if I can avoid it. So that way I can actually break for this corner, because... Funnily enough, it's really hard to break in mid-air. Oh, this checkpoint's really wide? That's really annoying. Okay. I thought I was going through that corner alright, but the checkpoint was so wide for some reason. Okay. Got the line. Good. Push him out. Get out of the way. And now at least this bit is cambered properly, so that we have a proper runoff. Oh, we don't want to go into the pits though. Oh, that was close. <laughs> Almost went to the pit lane. Alright, let's see what that thing is that comes second. <laughs> that was a Mercedes. Okay. Didn't look like a Mercedes badge. That SLS AMG I think was one I had the choice of, but it also wasn't tuned. Either way, after that rather hard work track to have to finish off with, uh, we've, we've definitely earned our Reno Clio 2016. Hard to find, apparently. And looking ahead to spring, we'll have an SRT Durango and an M321 to 2021 vintage. And, uh, oh look, own and drive the 2017 Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. Fairly sure that's the one that I've been using already quite a lot, so expect to see that back again next week for now though I'll let you look at the ferrari again thank you very much for watching let's see what the edge of event lab island has to offer us and uh yeah we'll see you next time